So in today's session, we will continue with chapter 25. It's on page number 273. Free radicals, antioxidant, phytochemicals, and anti-nutrients. So free radicals. Free radicals are unstable atoms that can actually damage your cells, healthy cells, tissues, causing illness and aging. Okay, if free radicals are more in number, the aging process will be accelerated. Inflammatory process, illness, disease conditions will be accelerated. Okay, so in current day scenario, antioxidants are sold just for the concept of tackling this free radicals okay but antioxidants they play a very important role that cannot be denied from a nutritional state of point even for children and as well as for adults for anyone in any age group so uh, free radicals are the oxygen free uh, the uh, free oxygen radicals which are the byproducts of all the actions all the all the biochemical uh, biochemical reactions that takes place within your body a byproduct of that is this free radicals okay they are linked to aging and they host a lot of diseases but little is known about their role in human health or how to prevent them from making people sick so coming to the types of free radicals you have reactive oxygen species means unpaired electrons okay so uh, these are the uh, the atoms the free radical atoms they have unpaired electrons in their outermost shell and this is what makes them a free radical and this reactive oxygens oxygen uh, ele uh, electron which is there in the outermost cell okay for example superoxide and an ion peroxide hydroxyl radical hydroxyl ion okay they all have you can see it uh, these dots okay this is the oxygen is not a free radical because oxygen has all the uh, uh, every uh, every at every electron in the oxygen's outermost shell is having a pair okay but here in superoxide anion you can see this red dot this does not have a pair there is two pairs here two pairs here okay uh, so the, the, this becomes a free radical because of this unpaired electron okay Peroxide, also a free radical because it has two unpaired electrons, okay? Hydroxyl radical, again, one uh, one unpaired electron in the oxygen part, okay? All the other electrons have a pair. So, this is also hydroxyl ion is not a free radical because it does not have an unpaired electron, okay? So, these are the different types of free radicals present, okay? Is it clear about the concept of unpaired electron, how it appears like from a science point of view?
sources of free radicals. First is your drugs. Okay. After reacting with the body, after functioning within the within the body, uh, drugs are another source of free radicals. After they have done their mechanism of action, something that remains back, okay, that would be a source of free, uh, free radical. Then other chemicals that you put in, in the in the body, okay, uh, you ingest some chemicals or you apply some chemicals that also can work as free radicals. Pesticides from food, okay, if it is not cleaned properly, okay, vegetables and foods not cleaned properly, these pesticides can be ingested and that act as a free radical. Industrial pollutants, it depends on where you are staying, what is the water quality that you have, soil quality that you have, air quality, okay, so that would lead to this industrial pollutants, tobacco, smoking, okay, sunlight. Uh, being in sun sun for a pretty long uh, duration, so sunlight, ionizing radiations like gamma rays, X rays. If you are working in a radiology department, coming to the role of free radicals, what we know so far, biological role. They moderate the inflammatory pro uh, process by regulating the prostaglandin synthesis. Okay, they check the infection by uh, killing the bacteria. Uh, and also they maintain your vascular tone by making sure that endothelium, endothelium is the innermost layer of your blood vessels. Okay, so that has relaxing factors. Okay, so make sure, it makes sure that the vascular, uh, the vessels, blood vessels in your body is not always contracted. Okay, they also relax as well. And they also assist in detoxification process of your liver. Okay, so this is the biological roles of free radicals. Oxidative stress. When majority of your cells can tolerate a mild degree of oxidative stress because they have repair systems inbuilt, okay, which will recognize and remove the uh, damaged molecules as it is. And then these uh, removed damaged molecule, molecules or cells will be replaced by new ones, okay? So it will increase the antioxidant defenses also when this replacement of cells is taking place. When new cells are coming, the antioxidant defenses will also go up. Then free radical induced diseases. So in which uh, any superoxide radical damage or hydroxyl radical damage, okay, it can it can cause a damage in your DNA structure as well. And even during phagocytosis, phagocytosis is the process when your uh, fighter fighter cells are swallowing and killing the bacteria, which is the primary defense mechanism in your body. And when this phagocytosis takes place, when your killer, uh, the immune cells are killing and digesting the bacteria, a lot of superoxide radicals are released in this process. Okay, and normally, uh, this these uh, superoxide radicals are kept in check by the uh, body's natural enzyme defenses. Make sure that even though phagocytosis are, is taking place, but it but the but the super Oxide radicals released during that process do not surpass the limit. Okay. Then diseases attacking uh, diseases by attacking the cell membrane, like retinopathy, respiratory distress syndrome, arthritis, edema, inflammation, a, a cell lysis. Okay, healthy cells undergoing breakdown. These all are the free radical associated cell diseases in which cell membrane gets destroyed. How free radicals destroy the cell membrane is through these processes. So diseases by attacking DNA, hydroxyl radical, can cause DNA damage. DNA cell in, in each human cell receives around 10,000 oxidative hits on a daily basis. It is assumed, okay, it is assumed that a single DNA is getting around 10,000 10, chances of being damaged by free radicals. 
but majority of this uh, damage is repaired. Some of it does not get repaired. Okay, so that's the reason why there are high chances of DNA mutations leading to cancer or other inflammatory disease conditions. Then diseases by the attack of proteins, free radicals can also cross the cross the aggregate link and damage the proteins. For example, proteins present in your muscles, proteins stored in the body, that can also undergo oxidative stress and that can get damaged. Okay. So leading to weakening of muscle cells. These are how these are the different pathways through which free radicals attack, or the, the way how free radicals work within your body. How much of an antioxidants you take, free radicals will still do some of these, all of these actions to an extent. With antioxidants, you can control the extent of this damage, but you cannot completely take away all the damage. Coming to antioxidants, antioxidants are compounds in food that scavenge and neutralize it. They will neutralize free radicals. And they are mostly found in plant-based food. And they are substances whose presence will in relatively low concentration can significantly inhibit the oxidation targets or significantly inhibit the free radicals. Even little bit of antioxidants can take care of a lot of free radicals. So there are different categorization of antioxidants. One of it is shown on the slides here. Based on its bioactivity, the way how it functions within the body, you have enzymatic antioxidants and non-enzymatic. Enzymatic means they these antioxidants, they act as enzymes like superoxide, dimutase, mutase, dis, uh, dismutase, and glutathione peroxidase. So these are, they act as enzymes, okay? They help in carrying out the biochemical reaction within the body. And there are non-enzymatic antioxidants. They don't function as enzymes at all. They just function as regular antioxidants, taking care of the free radical and oxidative stress damage, like vitamin A, A E, C, flavonoids, carotenoids, etc. Then based on solubility, you have water-soluble as well as fat-soluble antioxidants. Water-soluble antioxidants are your ascorbic acid, that is vitamin C, glutathione, uric acid, Fat soluble ones are vitamin A, beta carotene, coenzyme Q10. And the size of the anti uh, antioxidants also matter. The small molecule antioxidant, retinol, tocopherol, large molecule antioxidant, flavonoids, catechins, carotenoids, depending on the size of each one. Coming to the further classification of antioxidants, depending on the category as we have discussed, enzymatic is there. Even under enzymatics, you can further, further classify that into natural and synthetic. Natural antioxidants present within the body, super, uh, super oxide dimutatase, glutathione peroxidase, catalase. Okay. Synthetic one, selenium compound that acts like glutathione peroxidase and food additives like propyl gallate, butylated hydroxy anisole, butylated hydroxy toline, okay, BHA, BHT, okay, these all are synthetic ones present in various antioxidant supply, supplements as well. Then vitamins like beta carotene, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, Depending on the mechanism of stage at which they act. So you have preventive antioxidants. So from the name itself, they prevent the free radical damage. They, uh, they prevent the peroxides from, get, uh, from getting the free radicals. And at the in, the in the event before the free radicals start damaging, they prevent their formation. They prevent the formation of free radicals.
then we have chain making antioxidants. They have the ability to trap peroxy radicals already liberated before they go and cause any damage. Okay, so they will trap the free radicals within their physical structure. So preventing of antioxidants, they prevent the formation of free radicals. Uh, chain breaking antioxidants, they will trap the free radicals before they cause any damage. They all are natural and synthetic. They, are, they come in natural as well as synthetic forms. Miscellaneous antioxidants, they act by different mechanisms. For example, beta carotene, they protect by trapping free radicals. And... Uh, vitamin C as well. Superoxide diluted is, they, they limit the application, uh, they have its limitations on application as a therapeutic agent. Glutathione peroxides, peroxidase, important in the defense system of cells. Then oxygen radical absorbance capacity or ARC. So this is a test in which through which you can identify uh, how good is the how good is the antioxidant, how well functioning it is the it is uh, it is. The oxygen radical absorbance capacity assay, it's an assay, it's a test that measures radical chain breaking ability. Like antioxidants can break the carbon chain of the free radical and this ability can be tested through this particular assay by monitoring the inhibition of peroxyl radical that is by induced oxidation how 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 well an antioxidant can induce the peroxyl radical from causing uh, can limit peroxyl radical from causing any uh, damage by breaking its chain okay that is the essay so traditionally the masala dabbas that we use in indian household which usually has uh, items like cloves cinnamon turmeric cumin sweet fennel ginger okay these are spices that naturally have high ORAC score, okay? Then coming to phytochemicals. So phytochemicals are plant-based bioactive compounds. They are produced by the plants for their protection. Okay, Phyto phytochemicals can protect the plants from getting attacked by any bugs, any bacteria, okay, so that the plants can stay alive. But these phytochemicals also have herbal quality to it, healing quality to it, okay, they're good for human consumption, consumption as well. So they can be derived from various sources, such as whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, herbs. And more than a thousand phytochemicals have been discovered discovered to this date. Some of this we will discuss shortly. So even in your textbook, they have given a table of different names of phytochemicals and their best source. Okay. This also, this screen also contains the same kind of information. So allied sulfides can be, these are phytochemicals found in onion, garlic, leek, chives, carotenoids, as we know, it is found in all yellow, red, orange, fruits and vegetables like tomatoes, carrots, watermelon, spinach, curcumin found in turmeric, 
flavonoids are found in red grapes, specifically red grapes, uh, blueberries, strawberries, cherries, apples, grapefruit, cranberries, raspberries, all the berries, the green tea, glutathione or green leafy vegetables, indoles, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, isoflavonoids, uh, legumes, isotheocyanides in, broccoli, in, in the uh, cruciferous vegetables, lignans in all the seeds, monoterpenes in citrus fruits, cherries, even lemon in is found in lemon in is found in lemons and citrus fruits. Phytic acid is found in whole grains, legumes, phenols, polyphenols, or any phenolic compounds are found in tea, berries. Saponins are found in beans and legumes. So these on the left, whatever name you see, is the different forms of phytochemicals and that best sources are given on the right side. So phytochemicals are good for human consumption. They also have antioxidant property. Smart nutrients or supernutrients, these are brain friendly nutrients. That's the reason why they, call, they are called as smart nutrients. So vitamin A, iron, folic acid, omega-3 fatty acid, yeah, these are the considered as smart nutrients. Foods that are rich in these foods uh, are specifically important for a growing child during the child's growth and development. These four major nutrients are specifically important for, the, for a good intelligent quotient and emotional quotient of the child. And also the nervous system development, these nutrients are required. So these are the smart nutrients. Super greens, you have spirulina, it's an algae, okay. So spirulina is an algae and it is now recommended as a safe food as well. It's a rich source of protein, vitamins and minerals. It contains various phytochemicals, some traces of cholesterol. It's a rich source of polyunsaturated fatty acid. And it is now used as a superfood, means low volume but high value. You just have to eat some capsules of it and it can give you major nutrition. But you, if, if you cook spirulina at high temperature, you will reduce its volume. And it's, it's better to take, take this with snacks or cold beverages, not to cook it. And it can be digested and absorbed fast within your body. And usually, uh, the protein conversation efficiency in the spirulina is quite high. So it can supply double amount of vitamin A requirement of a child. And children usually like the taste of spirulina as well. It can be given mixed with food, other forms of food. Next, we have spirulina specific pika. It's another, it's Spirulina, but it, the only difference between the, these two spirulina is a Pacifica has higher amount of protein value to it. Okay, so it's a microalgae, we know for its high protein and mineral content, with approximately 65% of its dry weight consists of protein. Okay, so it surpasses the protein found in red meat like beef as well. Also, it is rich source of vitamins, enzymes, minerals, um, minerals, chlorophyll and essential fatty acids. So it is the, this is the reason why it has been considered as a uh, superfood. 70% of it is protein. No other food contains this amount of protein. Then Klamath Lake Blue Green A algae. So this is a particular type of algae known as a superfood for the brain. And it has anti-inflammatory effect as well. Okay, and it can enhance your immunity. It has a strong antiviral components, natural antiviral components. And it works as a good blood purifier as well. It is high in beta-carotene, B-complex vitamins, fatty acids, enzymes, essential amino acids, nucleic acids. Then chlorella, 
Another form of algae, it can be used as tablets or supplements. It supports the function of liver and brain, improves digestion, elimination, detoxifies the blood, protects against radiation, and promotes weight loss as well, enhances immune function, decision-making abilities, thinking abilities, cognitive abilities can also be improved with prolella spirulina mix. So that's about super greens. All these are different forms of algae. And super antioxidant food, cooked tomatoes. High amount of lycopene is found. And it can be absorbed efficiently even if the body if it is processed into ketchup, juice, sauce, or paste. Paste lycopene can still, still be uh, absorbed from the body, tomato, even if it is cooked. Okay. Then turmeric, it has curcumin. So even it helps with the prevention action of turmeric for Alzheimer's is known. Well, the, 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 that curcumin might uh, play a role in slowing, slowing down the progression of Alzheimer's. Then we have blueberries. Many researchers have mentioned that all the red, purple, blue fruits like blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, black grapes, okay, they are good anti aging food in the 21st century because they have this chemical called anthocyanidins, which are very powerful antioxidants. They, they prevent uh, collagen damage so and also elastin damage. So you, your skin stays wrinkle free for a long time. Then beet grass, chlorophyll, that is present in green plants, can be used as a blood tonic as well. So foods such as wheat grass, algae, seaweeds, green vegetables can help build the blood and also purify it. It's rich in enzymes, vitamins, minerals, trace elements as well. And this makes wheat grass a highly nutritious substance. Then broccoli sprouts. It has this component called sulforaphane. So it is, uh, it has been seen that sulforaphane is good for stimulating the natural differences in your body. It has anti-cancer elements as well. So that makes broccoli sprouts as a superfood. It can also kill this, this sulforaphane compound, it can kill helicobacter pylori, which leads to peptic ulcer. If there is too much helicobacter pylori, H. pylori bacteria in your stomach, it can lead to stomach ulcer, stomach cancer. So this sulforaphane found in broccoli sprouts can actually kill the bacteria called helicobacter pylori. Then grapefruit. So grapefruit, it's uh, it's it's from the citrus fruit family, orange family. Okay, so have significant effect of vitamin C, high amount of vitamin C. They have bioflavonoids as well, like taxi, pollen, protein. Okay, they are important flavonoids found in all citrus fruits, including grapefruits. Then onions. So they, there is a subgroup called flavonoids of flavonoids, which are present in, in abundant, it is present in onions. And it has high quercetin rate as well, which has been linked in lowering the risk of coronary heart diseases. And also it helps in preventing cataract. So eating raw onion can help, or it's not only found in the onions, but also in apples, black tea, red wine. So it can reduce the risk of coronary heart disease, prevent cataract, allergy, asthma. Now coming to anti-nutrients. They inhibit the absorption of nutrients, okay, like trypsin inhibitors. Like uh, ovum, ovum, 
mucoid, which is a trypsin inhibitor, will not allow the uh, stomach or the intestine to absorb trypsin. Uh, trypsin. So it's found in ducks, white egg. It's found in legumes, soybeans, white of the eggs. Okay. And by just by cooking the food, you can get rid of them. They are heat labile, so they will. Uh, These trypsin inhibitors will be locked while cooking or exposing the food to heat. Then we have five dates. They bind into zinc, iron, calcium, magnesium, and will not allow the intestines to absorb these minerals, and thus it will lead to deficiency. So it is found in refi refined grains like polished rice. Okay, they contain less phytates. Germinated grains they contain less uh, for phytates. So whenever you are using grains, germinate them and use it, or you can use polished rice as well. If you are using whole grains, whole grains have high amount of phytates. Tannins and caffeine. Caffeine in coffee can be reduced by roasting the coffee seeds. Theobromine in cocoa uh, beans, okay, that is also a stimulant. Tannin, which is found in uh, legumes, okay, uh, that, that also has this anti-nutrient effect. They bind with iron and interfere with iron absorption from the food. They also bind with protein and don't allow protein to be absorbed. That's why you have to you do some processing which can re remove or reduce tannins and caffeine in food. Then you have oxalates, oxalic acid or calcium oxalates. There are plenty of them in legumes. Vegetables like spinach, drumstick, curry leaves, amla, nuts, coffee, tea. They interfere with calcium absorption as well. Then goitrogens. Goitrogens lead to the risk of uh, increased risk of goiter or they are uh, goiter causing elements because they inhibit the absorption of iodine in the, from the food. Theocyanates, isothiocyanates, gluco, glucoinolates, okay, they are present in vegetables belonging to uh, all the cruciferous uh, vegetables like cauliflower, uh, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cabbage. Radish, soybeans, okay, peanuts, they all have uh, goitrogens. They block the iodine uptake by the intestine. Then excess fiber, too much of fiber cannot be digested. So along with the undigested fiber, various nutrients will also leave your body. Then beta oxalic beta oxalyl amino alanine. It's present in kesari dal, and it can lead to lacrimism. Okay, that means uh, it's a neural neural condition in which the nervous system is affected, and it can lead to limp limping in humans and be uh, uh, like the development of the lymphs will get affected. So you can use the parboiled method, method of using kesari dal to get rid of this toxic amino acid. Then you have cyanogenic glucosides present in tapioca, cassava tapioca. So it can occur if there is uh, too much of protein consumption. It can uh, it can uh, uh, it can prevent the protein absorption. So by leaching uh, the uh, cyanogenic glucosides in tapioca, that is, you can do double cooking. Okay, which means you have to boil it first, remove the water, drain the initial water, and then recook it in fresh water. Okay, and then again drain it. So using this double cooking method, you can leach out the cyanogenic glucosides. Then aridin, it is uh, found in duck egg. It will not allow the absorption of biotin. Okay, but by cooking the duck eggs, you can get rid of the 
evident. Then xenobiotics. So these are synthetic compounds which are added to food to give more fl flavor like MSG, uh, Ajinomoto, MSG, monosodium glutamate. And it is thought to produce this condition called Chinese restaurant syndrome. And it can be carcinogenic in nature as well. And it is also referred to as Chinese salt. Then aflatoxins. It produce, uh, it can cause liver damage. It is produced by a specific kind of fungus called aspergillus flavus. They create this toxin called aflatoxin found in groundnuts and it can cause liver damage. Then polyphenols, many items, uh, any antioxidants found like amla, they have high polyphenols, even though there is vitamin C in abundance, but still these polyphenols, they can affect the bioavailability of iron. So these are some examples of anti-nutrients. Then you have zero calorie or empty calorie food. Water is the only true zero calorie food that occurs naturally. Okay, and zero okay, water does not give you any calories, but it is highly required for the body and to be alive. So what is zero calorie or empty cal calorie? They have taste, they have calories, but they do not have any nutritional value to it. Like all the packaged food items, okay, Coca-Cola, Lay's, chips, all the processed foods like cakes, pastries, okay, they, their calorie level is quite high, no nutritional value, and they have a negative impact on your health. They have no value for the money, money and they are helping offset cost of disease. No, they will they will increase the cost of disease. Okay. But what does nutrient dense calorie food do? They have cal low calories, but high nutrition, quite high amount of vitamins, minerals, macros. Okay. They have a positive impact on your health. Value for money is also high. And they can offset the cost of disease. They can reduce the risk of diseases. Okay, so that's the difference between zero calorie and nutrient dense food. Negative calorie food. Negative calorie food are, are fruits and vegetables. They have calories, but when they uh, when, when you consume them, when you digest them, they result in negative calorie, which means the body uses more calories to more energy to digest them than the calories they bring to the uh, to, to into into your body. That's the reason why it is called negative calorie because the body requires more calories to digest them than what they provide to you. Okay. So all uh, some uh, negative cal calorie vegetables are like asparagus, beetroot, celery, cucumber, garlic, spinach, brinjal, aubergine, bro broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, fruits, apples, apricots, grapefruit, papayas, raspberries, watermelon. Cranberries, oranges, blackberries, cantaloupes, that is muskmelon. Okay, so these all are fruits and vegetables that are, neg uh, that are negative calorie in nature because your body requires more energy to burn them. So you lose weight with this kind of fruits and vegetables. So that's all for today's session. If you have any queries, you can mention in the chat box.